shall we pray? It has been said that a family that prays together stays together. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, Thou, O God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we thank you, God, for the opportunity that you have allowed us to assemble here. As a matter of fact, God, you have called us to this place for such a time as this. We thank you for this assembly, O oh God, for the kings and the excellencies and all of the people who have come to delegate in your name. We pray, God, that you would endow them with wisdom. But we need wisdom now. God, we are so sick of talking about black power because what we need right now, God, is economic power. So we pray, oh God, that you would endow this assembly with the wisdom, oh God, of Solomon to lead thy people, oh God, truly into the promised land. We thank you for the strength of the Moses, our leader, the visionary, Reverend Dennis Dillon. We pray, God, for his strength and for all those, oh God, that he has been wise enough to assemble around him. God, we come today to say to the world, we are home at last, and we are home to make a difference, for this is our land. God, you gave it to us. We are your favorite. You have kept us over the years as an apple of your eye. You have brought us through the days of Nelson Mandela, through the days of Martin Luther King Jr. God, you have brought us through the days of slavery. You have brought us, God, through the days of indentured servitude. You have brought us, oh God, through the days of Emmett Till. You have brought us, oh God, through the children in Birmingham, Alabama. And now, God, you brought us here, oh God, to assemble in this place. Now, oh God, we ask you to tell us what you would have us to do. We pray, oh God, that we would know when we leave here where we go from here. For this is your assembly. It belongs to you, oh God. We want to make our own fire, oh God. We are tired of people making our fire. We want to do our own fire. God, we want to do our own finance. We want to do our own real estate. We want to do our own education. For God, our children are our greatest resources. And you brought us here to save our children. And we've come with the resources to do it. Bless, oh God. Keep us unified, oh God. Keep us together, oh God. For we hear the words of the great Martin Luther King Jr. who says that we would perish if we did not stay together as brethren, we would per perish together as fools. And then God, he told us, when you're strengthened, go back and strengthen our brethren. We've come to strengthen our brethren. We give you the highest hallelujah for you, God, of the God of Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. Let that peace just cover us, O oh God. Let it fill us, O oh God, with your precious spirit. Let what we do here be remembered, God. Let it be remembered in the history books for our children to read that there once lived a great people who assembled 400 years after slavery and they made a difference in the sweet name of Jesus. We give you thanks, praise in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you very much uh, for the prayers. We give glory and honor to God. Now I request the homecoming choir uh, to come to the front and give us an item. Uh, do we have the choir here?
Good morning, everybody. As Africans, we were taught how to dance from very, very little age. So I want to encourage you, if you can stand, I want you to stand with us. We're just going to dance to some African songs as we get ready for what we're about to do. Is that fine? Sure. Please, let's all stand. Thank you so much. If you can smile at the person next to you, just give them a good smile. Thank you. <laughs>
very much for those beautiful songs. Uh, we now move to our next item, which is um, the Welcome Home Remarks by our Vice President, uh, Honorable Chief Charumbira from Zimbabwe. I'm also proud to report that I am from Zimbabwe. And my name is Lynn. I shall be the mistress of ceremony for today. You're most welcome. Honorable Chief Charumbira, sir. Uh, good, morning. Good, morning. good morning. Good morning. The director of proceedings, Madam Lin Chwanda Mira, our keynote speaker, Dr. Julius Carvey, our distinguished Honorable members of Parliament, Pan-African Parliament, Senator James Sanders, Jr., uh, New York State Senator and Chair of Committee on Banks for New York. I don't know whether Dr. Mark is here. I haven't seen him. Maybe he's coming. Sorry? Sorry, sorry. Dr. Ibrahim Mayaki, the Chief Executive Officer of NEPAD. Our organizers of this major event gathering today, the Door of Return. Our Secretariat staff of Pan-African Parliament uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I don't think introductions have been done for everybody. Maybe before I arrived, I don't know. But I would want to mention the people that are sitting with me, this side behind me, and want to recognize them as they've uh, introduced themselves to me. Uh, 
George Fraser. I just want to recognize you formally. Can I just raise up your hand? Just raise your hand. Yes, let me see who is George Fraser. Reverend Dennis Dillon. Yeah, okay, James, Senator James Sanders will come again, but at least for now. And then uh, Dr. Ron Daniels, the president of the Institute of the Black World. Uh, I don't see the card, so I won't have your name. I'm the keynote speaker. The, the keynote speaker is, is, uh, is here with us. And uh, he is going to take the platform. This, uh, I'm standing here representing the president of Pan African Parliament. I am a vice president, as has been mentioned, Chief Charumbra from Zimbabwe. I'm representing the president, Honorable Roger Kodo Dan. Uh, he's busy on other business in Cameroon at the moment. He would have wanted to be here. Uh, but in his message, and it's written here, he says, you are all welcome, welcome home. You are all welcome, welcome home. These are his words to all of you and especially those that have come outside Africa, who traveled from elsewhere, he says, you are welcome home, this is your home. And that uh, it is proper that this event is being held at Pan-African Parliament. Because the African Union in its structures designated Pan-African Parliament the responsibility of providing a platform for African voices. This parliament, one of its main reason for existence is to provide the people of Africa, a platform from people from all walks of life, whichever sector, whether it is transport, it is health, civil society, uh, media, you name it. If you are talking of Africa, it is Pan African Parliament that should provide a platform uh, so that we can. Uh, share our views, our experiences, and share and design the future for all of us. And that uh, whether pain or joy on the continent should be shared with, through this platform. So it's very proper that we are gathered at Pan-African Parliament. Now we heard on these issues of pain uh, our man who gave us the word of God here. You heard him talking of a continent which is glorious, but the truth seems to negate the issue of glory. And he spoke of a blessed continent with everything, but we are all aware that even using the yardstick of um, sustainable development goals, the truth contradicts a continent that is blessed with resources. And we continue to ask why. Among the reasons that we give, again, the 
the men who deliver the word of God here mentioned something close to that. And I want to expand it and say, some people, when you do change, they want to say, let's focus on the future. Let's not talk of past. But uh, it is the past that will always be your, your burning platform that inspires you to move to the next level. So the, the past is important to the extent that it provides a burning platform. The reasons why we should change the way we do things. So if we don't have a past, there will be no motivation to move and design new paths for the future. I'm saying this because I'm convinced that this gathering is there to remind us of the discontinuity in our civilization which affected and has haunted Africa. The discontinuity in our thought processes as Africans. When imperial, the advent of imperialism and colonialism, 